you want to bring in Andy Putz there. He is the uh, former CKE restaurant CEO, also author of Capital, Capitalist Comeback, uh, The Trump Boom and the Left's Plot to Stop It. Andy, first I've got to get your thoughts. Uh, manufacturing still in contraction, but at a much slower pace. I think the market's reaction underscores or, or really defies this notion that we keep hearing that we should root for bad news to assuage the Fed. <laughs> Uh, it's, there's some things, obviously, there's some fragility in this economy. Yeah, there's a lot of, well, I, I, I think one of your earlier guests referred to the, uh, that, that the psychology at, uh, in the markets is bad. I think they're overreacting to things that are negative and they're underreacting to things that are positive. Look, this was, uh, the, the manufacturing grew, it was a big drop in December, but I just read the, read the release, it grew for the 116th month in a row. So. It's, uh, it, it's not like the world's coming to an end. Uh, things have slowed down a little bit with respect to manufacturing, but they could be up again next month. So, I think, as again, I think people are just overreacting to the bad and underreacting to the good. I think, I think that point you make is really something uh, the, the viewers at home should understand. I agree that uh, every, every bit of quote-unquote good news is mitigated immediately, immediately, where anything that might be negative or disappointing is magnified immediately. Uh, but this market reaction is stark. I do want to switch gears a little bit because uh, your, your, your specialty uh, chain restaurants, you know, sales, foot traffic, 2018, they both were down. And, and a lot of folks are saying this year doesn't look much better. What are your thoughts? Well, I think there's a lot of competition now from grocery stores. Grocery store sales are up and people are eating at home. So that's something that uh, people that are running restaurants need to keep in mind. And secondly, people need to adjust to the new economy. It's much like in retail. You know, Sears is failing, but Walmart's doing great. Kmart's failing, but Target's doing great. That's because Walmart and Target adjusted to the new economy. We've got, uh, it used to be if you ran a fast food restaurant, you had an advantage uh, with a drive through because a soccer mom coming home from a soccer game could stop and pick up some food and drive home, and it was very convenient. Uh, now, it, you know, maybe it's not as convenient because you've got, she could call Uber Eats and you can choose from, you know, 40 different restaurants and it's delivered to your door and you don't even have to sign for it that Uber uses your credit card, just like when you drive, when you get, when you go with an Uber driver. So the, the, the convenience element is changing. Uh, brands that pick up on that are going to be more successful than brands that don't. You see brands like Chick-fil-A doing very well, In-N-Out, Shake Shack, these kind of niche, niche brands that aren't these big, um, uh, larger brands that have been associated with traditional right. uh, restaurant service. I, I, I think millennials react differently to that. There's a lot, the world's changing, and restaurants need to react just like other industries. Yeah, we started the show talking about Chipotle uh, trying to take advantage of the different crazes with the, the different diets that are out there. To your point, McDonald's has continuously reinvented itself. On the other end of the, all of this, uh, you know, is, it was the ADP number. I want to ask you about that since, you're, since you point out this, this capitalistic boom that we're seeing and its impact. Uh, we'll see what the government number is tomorrow, but ADP, 271,000 jobs. Great. By the way, 37,000 in construction. 33,000 in transportation. Those are good jobs where you don't need a college degree. Professional business, 66,000. It's across the board, and it's pretty good. Well, transportation and construction are particularly relevant because if the economy is growing, that's where you're going to see the jobs. You're going to see it in people building, and you're going to be, see it in people delivering goods. So we're seeing continued economic growth. And I, I would also point out that consumer spending uh, was the best it's been since 2006, this last holiday season. And consumer spending drives two-thirds of our GDP growth. So the economy is doing very, very well. And it, it, it kind of takes me back to our original point about the psychology of the markets. I don't, I don't know why the markets are so overreacting to the, the, to the negative news that comes out. The economy is booming. Uh, people are doing very well. Wages are up. More people are working. We have 7 million job openings. People are taking home more of what they earn because of the tax cuts. There's really, there's really nothing on the horizon that would indicate that we're he heading into a recession or even much of a slowdown. I think we're going to see continued accelerated growth coming this next year, despite what you're hearing in the news media. I think a lot of it's political. A lot of it's because there's a party out there for whom a good economy is not good news. And that party happens to control a lot of the news media, so they're having an impact. I think we really are having a very dynamic economy, and it can and will continue. The American people should be patient. I also think, though, Annie, you can tell me your thoughts that 
President Trump is upsetting the status quo. Uh, in other words, a lot of very wealthy entities and people have made billions and billions of dollars off the way things are now. And, and when they say cheap supply chain, they're just talking about sleep, cheap labor. Now, we can discuss why is that labor so much cheaper and is it even fair to the people who may be in some sweatshop somewhere putting together these products. But, you know, there's some major forces out there that perhaps control trillions of dollars and have immense power that just don't want things to change. Well, I think that's exactly right. The benefits of this economic recovery, unlike the entire Obama era, where the, uh, where the upper 10 or 15 percent of American earners, the, the people with the most wealth, benefited, in the Trump boom, in this Trump economy, it's blue-collar workers that are benefiting. It's working-class Americans. In fact, for the first time in decades, it's harder to find blue-collar employees than it is to find white-collar yeah. employees. So yeah. we're really seeing a change. And that's being bared out in the data. Last month, non-supervisory workers made more money, faster in pace of a wage increase than their supervisors in four years. Hey, Andy, thank you. We could go on forever, thank but you, we got to wrap this up. Thanks a lot. Appreciate <laughs> right, it. Thanks.